Hey YouTube, Luca with Brass City Armory again. Coming at you with a, uh, another tutorial for all my easy CAD users out there who are running into a few problems. Um, I've been noticing this one a little more recently on some of the forums and the threads for the uh, people who are just starting out with their laser engraver. So uh, this video today is going to show you how to clean up images that are being um, tracked and filled wrong by the computer uh, within the EasyCAD software. So what I mean is this, so we got our image. Um, you could use anything, it doesn't really matter. Um, but just for this example, we have this uh, cool looking B, some kind of sports team emblem. So what I was referring to was when you go over here and you attempt to fill all these empty spaces in, we go to hatch, uh, your line distance and things of that nature are, uh, don't matter for this example, but whatever your hatch is, you go ahead and you hatch, and bam, we got this mess. So there's a couple things that can cause this, but the uh, two primary reasons are double lines behind lines and open nodes. We'll get to the open nodes in a, in a minute because it's a little more complicated, but the uh, doubled up lines is typically the problem. Uh, and this happens sometimes depending on what kind of software you use to vectorize the image. Sometimes it, for some reason, I, I unfortunately I don't know the uh, technical reasoning behind it, but sometimes the image will be exported with two layers of the image on top of each other, even when the artwork is flattened. Uh, if that made your head spin, don't worry about it, because uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, fix all that within EasyCAD. And it could be it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, sometimes it could be a little tedious if your image is especially complicated. Um, but for, for today, we're going to have this simple image, and you'll, you'll understand the, uh, the concept uh, as we go through it, and you'll be able to fix basically any image you import. So uh, we're going to go back, undo this. So the first thing you want to know is anytime you import an image into EasyCAD, the computer sees this as one image. It sees one image with basically holes, if that makes sense. So the computer is trying to see the image as these little square, or I'm sorry, these little shapes here are basically like a cookie cutter into the outer shape. So just so I so if I can clarify that a little more, just so you guys have an idea, if we pretend like just this, or actually oh, I got an even I got an even better idea. I'm chock full of good ideas today. So this square, the program sees this as a square. Okay, this is the perimeter, and then this is the area it wants you to fill or you want it to fill. So what's happening with this complicated image is it's seeing the perimeter of the image, but it's not recognizing this inner perimeter of a second image that it that you do not want filled in. So for instance, we have our two squares here now. So if I were to highlight this and hatch, the whole thing gets filled in. So what I meant with the cookie cutter analogy, if you will, is if you wanted just this outline here of this square filled in, you have to tell the computer that this is empty space. So the way you would do that in EasyCAD is you would select both these images, you would go over here and hit group. Okay, and now it just compressed this into one image. And now when we go back, it'll it'll view this inner shape as a hollow hole basically and then it'll fill in around it and that's what it's trying to do with all images even this even this b picture here but something is keeping it from recognizing the these inner shapes on the image as holes or things you do not want filled in so the way we're going to fix that is we're going to come back over to our image select the image and you're going to go up to the toolbar here and you're going to see this um, it's based, it looks like a little square, orange square with a blue circle. It's going to say ungroup when you hover over it. So as I said before, this is being viewed as one complete image. So you want to hit group, ungroup, and now you see all these little boxes showed up. So what that just did is it told EasyCAD to break up 
all the separate little polygons within the image. So now you have, if, you, if I click here, see I can drag this little shape away. So now, all, now this entire image has been broken up into separate little shapes. You see we have the knuckle here, we have part of the hand here, can be pulled away, the outline of the hand, you get the idea. So this is important now because I don't know if you noticed, but when I moved this piece of shape here, the same thing was underneath it. So this is the example I was talking about earlier where it's a double line issue. There's two, two lines, two images on top of each other. So the way that we're going to fix this is we have to break this up. So the way we're going to break it up is just like this. Now, again, if you have a more complicated image, it might take a minute, but it'll, it'll still, you'll get the same result that you're looking for. So what I typically do is, or start on the outside line first, the perimeter or the, the outline, let's just keep it simple, the outline of the image. So what you want to do is you want to click on the outline. You want to double check by looking at all these little boxes. Just give it a once over make sure that nothing inside the line is highlighted and in this case nothing is we see that the line is just all on the outside of the image with the little lines and the little boxes then you want to hit delete on the keyboard so this is good we see the perimeter image disappeared and there was nothing underneath it so now we can hit the back button or the undo button up here which is the arrow or the keyboard shortcut Control z to bring the perimeter image back or the outline, excuse me. So now once you get the outline done, you want to start going little by little with each shape. So for instance, I'll click here and I hit delete and you see how the boxes disappeared, but the shape didn't. That means that the top layer of that copy of the shape has been, is gone, which is what you want. Now, if I were to move this, there's nothing underneath. And if I were to delete it, it would just delete. So this is what you want. That is one complete shape. And now a good, a good um, thing to do here is as you go, you want to click the shape, click the perimeter, and you want to hit combine. And now when you hit combine, it's viewing those two shapes as one shape, but with that cookie cutter shaped hole I was explaining about earlier. So now if you went to hatch this, you see it'll it'll color everything else except that shape that we did. So now you're just gonna hit Control Z again and come back to these two highlighted and we're gonna continue. So now we're gonna do this and this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. And just to show you again now when you go to highlight the shapes you can click the, click the outline here or this inner shape, it'll recognize either as one shape. Hold shift, and then you wanna select the ones that we just did. Okay, now those are selected, you're gonna hit the combine again. Okay, and we're, we're combined, and we can double check, you can click on some empty space to unselect, click here again just to double check that it's combined, let's hatch, and boom, there we go. And now, as you see, we're starting to get some progress here. Oh, I made a small mistake. I forgot to click a shape here. Let's try this again. There we go. So this is what we want. So basically, and I won't, I won't bore you guys, um, by doing it all here, I'll just uh, skip it to uh, when it's all done and then show you what the final image looked like before and then after we, we delete all the extra, extra shapes. Okay, so using the technique I just showed you guys, I just went ahead and did uh, the rest of all these little uh, shapes within the larger shape. Now if you, and I've already combined them all, so now when you click it, everything is highlighted, and then we're going to go here and hatch, and there we go, and that's how you fix it. So I'll, I'll uh, go ahead now and I'll explain the uh, um, editing nodes and lines. Um, so basically, 
Here, let's uh, actually, I'm going to delete this because I think we're done with this guy. Or actually, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's see. Mm, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Okay. So, turns out the B is still going to be useful for this next example. So, anyway, the way these uh, laser programs, and this is not just for EasyCAD, this is for any um, any laser program or any graphing program that uses vector images. These little, and I'll zoom in here, get a closer look for you guys. So what nodes and lines are, the node is a point and the line is obviously a line. So the way this works is, or the way that laser or graphing printer, or whatever you have, the way they, the computer recognizes these images is as points and lines. So the squares here in EasyCAD represent a point, and then the line is obviously represented by the line. And this is how the computer knows how to draw the image by graphing it with these little points and lines. So sometimes you might get an image that is unclear, and I'll sh and I'll explain what I'm doing here in a second. I just want to show you guys what I mean. So we're gonna go ahead and break this one. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and break this one. Okay. So let's just say you loaded this image in. Everything's fine. Um, you know, you you didn't. There weren't any stacked lines to cause that that mess that you saw earlier. But now you do this, and then you come down here and you notice, hey, wait a second. What is this? What is this? Got a whole whole mess here. So typically when you see these in images, when it's not the whole image, but maybe like little sections that have that messed up line or that messed up shading in the image, that usually means that there's an open node somewhere. And typically the way you can find it is you can zoom in real close and you could just see where this doesn't look right. Like we, we knew the base image was a B. So this all should just be white and unshaded, white and unshaded, but we have some shading in here. So there's a broken line somewhere or a broken node. In this case, it was the broken node that you saw me break. So whenever you have this happen in EasyCAD, you're gonna have to come over to the left-hand panel here and you're gonna see there's two arrows. There's this arrow, which is just to pick the image or highlight, but then there's a special one right down here. It's called Edit Node. So you're gonna click that. And when you click Edit Node, you're gonna click the image and you're gonna see all the little nodes pop up. These, they're the little squares. Now, unfortunately, there's really no easy way to do this, um, especially in a complicated image, but like I, like I showed you, when you see shading in a wrong area, the node that is broken or the line that's split is pretty close by. So in this case, what we made it, I made it just simple for the example, but we broke, or I had broken these two nodes right here. So now if you zoom in, you can see there's a little space. So this is not good because the computer, as it's trying, or EasyCAD, as it's trying to fill in the shapes, it sees this separation here. So then it thinks that this is part of a shape that you do not want colored in. So then it attempts to color it in and it just gets all all crazy. So the way you fix these broken nodes is pretty straightforward if you ever see it. You're gonna click and you're gonna, you don't have to drag the gap closed if you don't want to. Um, I typically do because sometimes it'll just make sharper lines but you don't wanna close it all the way because that'll cause its own problems. But I usually, what I do is I bring it close. Boom, just like that. So when the two nodes are close to each other, you're gonna have one highlighted and it's highlighted when it's black like this. You're gonna hold shift on your keyboard and then click the other node. Now they're both highlighted black. This is good because this means that you've selected both nodes and now EasyCAD's ready to do something with them. So then you wanna come up here in your toolbar and you're gonna see Unite Node, which is this little box right here, Unite Node. You're gonna click it. And now this just became one closed node, which is what you want. So now we're gonna go back down under here and we're gonna fix the other one that I broke. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna highlight it, drag it shut a little bit. We're gonna hold shift, click the other node, unite node, and boom, fixed it. And now when we go back and we hatch our image, that messed up line is gone. And now this should help you guys who are having problems with these images. That that Those are the two most common reasons. Um, the other ones could be like a, a graphing reason with the image or, and such, but I covered some of that in, a, in another video, but I'll be doing another video a little more in depth with graphing images. But typically the cleanest way to import an image is um, through Adobe Illustrator as a AI8. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, uh, my previous video of how to laser etch, um, I use the Colt Magazine as an example, and I'll, I'll link the video here. Uh, if you guys watch that, it'll just show you briefly how to save as Adobe Illustrator 8 or AI8 files. And that's about all there is to it. Um, it might seem a little intimidating at first if you're not familiar with the controls and such, but you'll pick it up real quick. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys found some of this information useful, and I hope it helps you out for all those out there getting started with the EasyCAD or having trouble uh, with your laser program. Most laser programs uh, let you do uh, the, the techniques I showed you uh, here in EasyCAD. The only difference being is maybe the buttons might be in different areas, but for the most part, um, from, from what I know, most of the programs let you, let you do node editing and little things like that. So that's it for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them down and below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And if you have any ideas or if there's anything else you wanna see in for future videos, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Thanks and see you in the next one.